Welcome, let's settle for the details. The Institute of Climate and Environmental Governance has expressed concern about the implementation of the emission levy, which is expected to start from today, February 1. According to the Institute, the introduction of the emission levy will increase the operational cost of motorists and industries. Here's more in this report. Despite the progressive nature of the levy, the Institute of Climate and Environmental Governance is concerned about the apparent lack of commitment by the government beyond the imposition of the levy to investing the expected revenue on financing green infrastructure. Based on the analysis of the act, it said there is no stated portfolio established to use the revenue generated to finance the country's energy transition efforts. Nonetheless, it believes that the introduction of this levy is crucial for Ghana's energy transition agenda in attaining net zero target and would align with both environmental objectives and the socio-economic well-being of the citizens and industries in Ghana. The institute also disagreed with the taxation approach on motor vehicles, buses and coaches, saying this makes it unjust for low polluters to pay the same rate as high polluters. It's recommended to government to consider setting up an emission fund to ensure a proper accountability mechanism that guarantees judicious allocation of funds generated. Let's have a discussion on this. Joining us via Zoom is Kwesi Yamwa Abedu. He is policy lead with climate finance and energy transition. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let's start with why you think that or why you have issues with the implementation of emission levy. Do you think that government's uh, justification is untenable? To your viewers and then good evening to your listeners as well. We, first of all, recommend government for coming up with um, such a policy or the levy. Um, the levy we seeks to um, disincentivize the emission, emission of carbon dioxide is something that we should applaud. However, we think that more could be done. Government should show, could show more commitment by one, ensuring that there is a specific fund, um, example, the emission fund that revenues accrued would be deposited into. We find it problematic um, to suggest that government is depositing the funds or the, the revenue generated into the consolidated fund. We believe that if the monies that has been accrued is being deposited into an emission fund or a specific fund, we should be able to account for it properly. We all know what has happened to the water and sanitation fund. Uh, it has been a bit of problematic where what is supposed to achieve, it has not been able to achieve. As an environmental um, inclined institution, we believe that safeguarding the environment goes beyond lip service. Indeed, we, act, we appreciate the fact that government has shown some level of commitment by implementing this task. But what we are so much concerned is, are the tax going to be used for the purpose for which it has been implemented? That is what we should be looking at. If we should be looking at that in that perspective, I believe that would be contributing um, towards energy transition. And you know that Ghana is a signatory to the UN climate, that, that's the Paris Agreement. And then by being a signatory to that, we also have a commitment to make. That is why I say that in some, in some portion, we would, we would have to recommend government for making a, um, some level of contributions towards um, our energy transition agenda. Mm. But how do you foresee implementation of the emission levy going forward? Okay, going forward, I think that when you read the act or the levy, you get to realize that the implementation are going to be from one, um, from the industry side, GRA is going to execute that. And then from the motorists or the individuals or households, um, it is expected that DVLA would execute that. Um, one, DVLA before you get your road user word or what you call the road word or road use certificate, you would have to show a proof of paying the climate, uh, the emission emission levy before you would be issued a road uh, use certificate. On the, um, it's in a similar vein for the industries or for the uh, mining sector, the energy sector and the likes, we, it is expected that before they file their uh, tax, tax with G GRE, 
they should be able to also make payment for the emission fund. So I, I find that implementation to be a bit easier. However, our major challenge has been with the management of the funds. Uh, in Ghana, our major challenge has not been uh, revenue collection. Our major challenge has often been associated with the management of funds after that. We wouldn't want this um, levy be one of those several ones that, are, that was, uh, let's say, implemented for other reasons. For instance, if we are channeling the proceeds of these emission levy into green projects uh, like afforestation and the likes, definitely would be inching would be inching towards our energy transition goals. But then if we would have to channel it towards certain sector or sectors, that would not be of help to our environment. That would be to our detriment. So one of our recommendations to government is to ensure that revenues generated are being channeled into the uh, environmental causes. For instance, the Forestry Commission um, started with the afforestation project somewhere 2018. But today, as I speak now, it's a bit um, struggling. So we could resource the Forestry Commission to expand the scope of the afforestation project, because if we have more trees, definitely they will be able to absorb this carbon dioxide. Are they proposing the emission fund? Why? Okay, we are proposing the emission fund because there are several several funds that go into the consolidated or several levies that go into the consolidated levy. The reason we are proposing an emission fund or a specific fund, um, a specific fund, is to ensure accountability and transparency, to ensure that it is devoid of corruption. That is what we have been championing all this while. If it goes to the consolidated fund, it's going to be a bit challenging to account for. Let's assume that the Minister of Finance tells us that 3% of the amounts of um, the, the emission levy that has been channeled into the, the consolidated fund has been used, has been used for environmental related projects. It's going to be challenging to, 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 to find out. But then if there is a specific fund, we know that this is the reason it was set up. It is very easy for us to track the usage of such monies and then also make uh, necessary progress about it. Mm, thank you very much, Kwesi. Kwesi Abedo is policy lead uh, with the climate and uh, energy transition. Thank you very much for your time. Moving on, the Ghana Telecoms Chamber has advised mobile money vendors whose SIM cards have been blocked to work towards linking their Ghana cards to the accounts for reactivation. The telecoms regulator has started blocking such SIM cards to enable the Ghana Revenue Authority collect taxes for the state. Already, the Mobile Money Agents Association of Ghana says about 60% of its members will be affected. Speaking to Joy Business, the CEO of the chamber, Dr. Ken Ashibe, said the only way out is for the SIMs to be registered for reconnectivity. The communication about linking SIM cards did not start with the chamber. Mm. The communication about linking SIM cards started in January 2022 when the policy statement was made by the ministry. So the statement that the, the chamber issued on uh, a few days ago was basically reminding all of us that the 31st data we are talking about had come. And, you know, so if anybody, and again, so that's why I say that if it is that people did not get the communication right, as we speak, you know, if you go to any of the EMIs with your Ghana card, you would be able to get your SIMs connected and then you, you, your, your, your accounts would be put back again. We should bear in mind that the alternative for that is to say that all agents who do not have their, their SIM cards connected and their SIMs connected, it would mean that the, the, ex, the exemption that you get from the law would not be applicable. And that's not something you want to do. And then it brings about all the complexity, which also bear in mind, this linkages and all of that deals with some of the challenges with uh, fraud and all the things that we are calling on. So there's a policy intent. And so for me, that's why I say that we, uh, the EMI should make all the efforts to make sure that anybody who has been blocked and provides the Ghana card and all of that, it will be speedily dealt with. Money Agents Association of Ghana is appealing for an extension to synchronize their Ghana cards or TIN with their accounts. Joshua Edmondson is a national deputy PRO for the Mobile Money Agents Association of Ghana. 
It's a nationwide exercise. And uh, as early as uh, 7 a.m. today, we started having uh, calls uh, from our members all across the breadth and length of the country, uh, complaining of their sins uh, being blocked. And uh, sincerely, as you can see, I am even at uh, one of the uh, uh, MTN's office in Tema myself to, you know, personally uh, experience exactly what is going on. So, indeed, the exercise has started, and uh, it is very, very difficult. It's a very challenging one, and something that uh, we don't wish for because a lot of agents have their money still blocked on their sims, and uh, it's, it's been very, very difficult. I would say that our president was even a little bit magnanimous with respect to the figures because uh, currently, if you look at what is going on, it's, it's far more than that. Okay, it's far more than that because of some underlying factors that, you know, uh, the electronic uh, money issue is already aware of. It. You're already aware of the of the of the of the, of the prevailing challenges. The issue is that you have some of the agents who are using uh, uh, accounts that are all not in their names. You have some that are having genuine problems with their Ghana card issuance. You have some uh, that are also uh, facing challenges with respect to, uh, uh, you know, uh, the registration process. Because, and until these issues are met, sincerely, I mean, the, the, the exercise cannot be complete. Because we shouldn't forget that whatever it is, these agents are, are running businesses. And joining us for a discussion on this matter is West Africa Vice President of CART International, Apia Kusia Dumako. Thank you very much, Mr. Apia Kusia Dumako, for making time. What are your own readings to the blocking of the Ghana CART or 10 to accounts of mobile money agents? Uh, good evening, and your viewers of Joy News Worldwide. I think my designation is the West African Regional Director for CART International. Okay. Well noted. Moving away from that, I think this is a very straightforward issue. Government came with a policy regulations requiring all SIM, hold, SIM card holders, whether mobile phone or voice or data or mo mobile money, to have your Ghana card linked to your SIM card. And after a lot of deadlines, if uh, mobile agents have not registered, linked their card to the Ghana card, and I think that they there is a problem. I don't think we can blame the regulator or government. I think that the the onus now lies on the mobile money agent for them to do what the law is required of them. Mm. We all say that the law is what it is, not what it ought to be. Now about 30,000 agents are likely to be affected. How significant is this number? We can't afford to lose them either, can we? Yes, we can't afford to lose them either. But they, I mean, I don't have the data, but then I may, it may be conservative to say that about 70% of them may also have a Ghana card in their name. And so they, and I'm not sure when they go there tomorrow, their card, uh, if they go there with their Ghana card, they will be allowed to uh, link it and be able to operate again. You see, one thing is that we must also understand in Ghana, when laws, when deadlines are given, a lot of people wait till the end of the deadline, then they come to the media and try to crowd file where there are no file. It is simple. Get this thing by before the end of the year. As engineer uh, uh, Kanashibe said, there's a lot of reasons for getting this uh, Ghana card linked to your, uh, your SIM card because it also helps in fraud detection. A lot of fraudulent activities that are going on, people are using merchant SIMs in doing so. And so if we can get all mobile money vendors SIM card linked to the Ghana card, at least we'll be closing in on the fraudsters in this country. And also, it also helped government in its revenue uh, assurance. In your view, how best can we address the concerns of these agents? I think the concerns of these agents uh, is that they should rather go, it's simple, they should go and register, link their Ghana card to the to the their SIM card, and then they'll be back online again. Of course, it is a bit of an inconvenience to walk to your usual uh, mobile money vendor to transact money and just to realize that the agent 
uh, shop is closed because of the SIM card. And of course, they must. They also must know that any day that they go out of business, they are also losing money. And so, if you want to survive in this harsh economy, then it's better. The best thing to do is to go and link your Ghana card to your your uh, your SIM card. Mm. Thank you very much, Mr. Kusi Adomako. He is the West Africa Regional Director for Cats International. If you just joined us, this is Business Live and I'm Emma Davis, but we'll take a quick break and we'll return with more. Welcome, thanks for staying. Now, only 15% of farms in Ghana are commercialized. That's according to Sea Energy Global Holdings. Its report on creating agriculture financing schemes for sustainable agriculture and food security also revealed that only 4% of total bank lending in Ghana went into agriculture in the last five years. Here's more. The report said low mechanization, poor farm record keeping, poor rural transportation infrastructure, post harvest losses, among others, are the core challenges affecting the agriculture sector performance and hindering finance for the sector. Typically, agriculture portfolios are thin for all financial groups. Considering the existing funding gaps, the report said more interventions are expected from funds and financial institutions, especially the Agriculture Development Bank and Ghana Exim Bank, whose core mandates include providing funding to actors in the agriculture value chain. In the wake of climate change, the report also warned of the rising food security risk in the country. Ghana is one of the top 10 countries impacted severely by climate change despite contributing the least to global warming. The country saw an unprecedented rise in food prices from 2022 evidenced by the National Food Price Index which increased by 23.8% in 2022. Let's now engage Linda Latte, an analyst with CNAG Ghana, for more on this. Thank you very much, Linda, for making time to join us this evening. What influenced this research from your end? Can you tell us? Hello, Linda, can you hear me? Hello, good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much, and good evening once again to your viewers. Okay, so um, here at Synergy, we, we are mainly a, an investment banking and a consultant firm. So as part of our core businesses, the culture and every business is one of our key interests. And based on that, we decided to delve into the issues of the agricultural sector. That is basically what inspired this write-up. And considering the recent inflation prices, inflation, we realized that um, the main driver was food, food inflation. And that's a small threat to our food security issues. Hmm. Are you surprised that over the years, funding for the agri sector from the commercial banks has not been or it is less than 4%? Okay, so I'll say it's it's unacceptable, but it's not it's not surprising, because for a sector that is is has a lot to offer, doing four percent only is is very absurd. But also, it's not it's not just because they don't want to, but the key challenges that the sector faces is what is shying most of the commercial banks away. And as noted in the in the write up, you see that. More, mainly the agri sector is suffering from poor mechanization. There's so much um, inadequate capacity, storage capacity, processing capacity. And that's among few others are what is really shying away or causing the, the financiers to shy away from financing the, the sector. Mm. But during your research, were you able to engage any of the banks? Okay, so um, I would say not specifically engaged with the banks, but from their data, some data released from reliable sources, we could trace it and know that these are their performances over the time. Mm. But also, Gesa has been uh, de-risking banks to help them lend to farmers. 
have you also engaged them in any way or you are yet to we are yet to okay for you what should be done to improve the situation when it comes to lending to the agri sector in ghana okay so and one many ways we suggested or recommended in our, in our write-up saying that yeah we understand that the agri sector may be risky but it's, it's, it's not hopeless so considering um, the sector having much to offer stakeholders should adapt to key or um, let me say creative schemes that could solve their challenges at the same time or in the in the same way co providing finance to them so in a way of the suggestions we put in out there on in our article stating that they could adapt i think ghana is doing well with some of them so far the psu go financing scheme is, is notable so we recommend that that more of such schemes should be expanded to the to the sector also having other creative ways of financing the sector by providing um, equipment in in most farmers or most players in that industry may not necessarily have the upfront capital to acquire some mechanized mechanized um, equipment so basically if the government should pay attention in that way giving them this creative financing scheme i think the, the sector should do well Okay, thank you very much, Linda. Linda Latte is an analyst with Synergy Ghana, and they came through with this report. And that will be all for tonight on Business Live. My name is Emma Davis. For more business news, do log on to myjoyonline.com. I leave you with international business.